Hello everybody, welcome back to the Seclair Chatterbox, the uh, show where we talk about what's on our mind and the topics of the day and our experiences. And uh, I'm Mike Sorg, the uh, Director of Web Media here at Seclair, and today we have Dr. Chaudhry. For those who don't know who you are, please introduce yourself. <laughs> oh, I'm still finding myself. <laughs> 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 uh, well, my name is Chaudhry. I'm one of the psychiatrists and work here at Seclair and also consult at a few hospitals and also teach um, at UPMC St. Margaret. And we also have a student with us again today. <laughs> Hello, my name is uh, Atar Rathor. I'm a third year medical student at Le LECOM, Lake Erie College of Osteopathic Medicine. And uh, I've been with Seclair for four weeks now. Excellent, excellent. Now, uh, Doc, I understand that uh, you started a new uh, a group called uh, Coffee with the Doctor. Yes, yes. I think people were, we were having a hard time finding people to see, so we thought we'll bring in coffee in the picture. <laughs> and my, how it changes, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it was interesting. We were seeing a lot more people in the coffee places than, than in places of treatment and so the coffee brings people back together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Certainly a sign of, sign of, uh, they say, breaking bread together mm -hmm. or drinking coffee together. I see that a lot. I, I, I've seen uh, myself in my profession, I've seen a lot of open coffee club for entrepreneurs, uh, you know, and, and, and that really does seem to be the common. <laughs> Who doesn't like coffee? Right? That's right. <laughs> and if not, they can have a tea. That's right. In olden days, um, I, I used to be medical editor for Allegheny County Medical Society's uh, periodical called Bulletin. And we were looking at the archive and it was very interesting to see uh, the doctors would have uh, a cigar um, uh, you know, uh, group. So they'll meet and have a cigar. Uh, they would also have us, you know, have a cigarette, you know, so they would, and actually it was published, you know, that our next cigar or cigarette group is going to be such and such day. <laughs> 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 so now when we talk about that, uh, it kind of seems, oh my God, and the doctors would meet on a, you know, and smoke, and now everybody's so much against smoking. It's all about education, mm -hmm. but, but that served a purpose of bringing people together. Mm -hmm. and, and it could be different and healthier. Uh, but back then, it was whatever what was prevalent and whatever people thought was important. Could we maybe see a, a pizza party with a doctor someday? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody likes a pizza party. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, but it takes to the adaptability. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the important uh, point I, I feel uh, we have missed in medicine is that medicine has become a lot more of a very dry subject matter. You know, people go in, they sit in a cubicle and then they're waiting for the doctor and the next in line walks in and the doctor works like a mechanical tool um, write a prescription then out you go you sit in front of a computer pay your bills and then the, the door which is exit and you're out there's no human connection and so our group really is, is indicating uh, a desire of human mind and body and our psyche to reconnect with a human being. And thus the importance of uh, bringing in something that breaks down the barriers of science into into commonality and, and humanity. So, so it's been going pretty good well so far. Well, very interesting. Uh, the idea came from our social worker and she goes, uh, because I used to go to the hospital and almost 10 people would want to talk to me at the same time. And it was all about medicine, Either the medicine is causing side effect or they want more medicine uh, or they just want to talk to me for some for some other reason. And I thought I cannot talk to them in the hallways, but maybe I can talk to them while they're having coffee. I don't take coffee, but I, I, I enjoy people when they're taking coffees. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that platform, so our social worker brings in uh, coffee and uh, our, our, our folks who are in treatment come around and then we all sit together and we uh, we let let the conversation evolve rather than having an agenda and within that most often people don't talk about their medicines anymore mm -hmm. nor they want to talk about their side effects they want to talk about what's on their mind and often that is wanting to connect with somebody who cares 
Yeah, and I know uh, you were there this morning. What were your thoughts about that? that I thought it was very nice just to see because the patients, they interact well with not just even with the doctor, with themselves. They're just kind of sitting there chatting, having coffee. It makes them feel like they're not in an institutionalized type of place. They're just having fun with each other, talking like they were friends, just normally, casually at a coffee place. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to just see them outside of the element of being a patient, just as a normal person. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And I thought they were making fun of me too at one time. Did you notice that? <laughs> yeah, they were they were joking around whenever we were talking about. I think it was about the chicken. <laughs> chicken, right? <laughs> it, it was just nice. Yeah, it was almost like they were, like you said, breaking down the barrier. Just instead of viewing the doctor as someone who's above them on a pedestal, mm-hmm. uh, they kind of just view you as another person who's there with them and trying mm-hmm. to help them, which mm-hmm. I thought was nice to see. Um, um, and I, as you noticed, I mean, I. It's kind of interesting when we are able to focus on something different than what seems to be the problems. Our problem seems to go in the shadows and they're not at our forefront. Um, and, uh, you know, all different symptoms, whether it's depression, anxiety, panic, and uh, um, uh, just or just feeling the loss of, you know, somebody in family or not hearing from a family member. Uh, that can be very hard on the heart. Uh, and, and our psyche. So folks really kind of, you know, feel that they are, have a sense of belonging uh, and, and a sense of connecting, and which is so much missing when we're just sitting in front of our computer or a Facebook or, 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 or just, you know, texting somebody. It's really a real person. It's not a book, it's a face and a person mm-hmm. and live breathing individual, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which, which is very powerful because we can feel the presence of another individual. Mm-hmm. It's very important to, to pair that if, if you are having that separate experience. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. So we really are finding these days a lot more, uh, they're not as much of diseases and disorders as much as we are finding dis-ease uh, and discomfort, uh, which shows up as psychiatric symptoms. Mm-hmm. Uh, not being able to sleep well could be because you're missing somebody or you can't forget something that has been said to you or you just feel alone and, and that's not a very comfortable feeling. Uh, so by connecting uh, to a physician and normalizing human behaviors and also you know, um, having all of us have a common, courteous, you know, playful conversation makes it so nicer that it, it generates good memories. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you feel that this morning? I definitely did. I felt like it was because you feel like it's different than even whenever you see them on a different day. Like they were completely different people, the way they were behaving and acting, and just to see them in a better mood almost because it, it almost lifts their mood just to have some coffee and like like I said before, like they just feel like they're like they're outside of the hospital. They're in a different setting, and then even though it's decaf, they <laughs> they, they still feel like they're they're enjoying it. They're having fun, and it's just something. Yeah. Like to feel like you're back to a different place. Thanks, mm-hmm. right. That's mm-hmm. right. So I really think that um, as we all uh, see the cost of healthcare going up so so much, we think about medicines as the only way of helping someone. Uh, but the art of touching, uh, hugging, being close, and being safe, and yet uh, being able to be available. Is, is, is a medicine that used to be there in the medical field, but it's now missing. Um, we, we become so fearful with all these dramas that go on about, you know, these sexual abuses and whatnot. People can become very scared. Uh, so nobody wants to touch no one or nobody wants to be in, in, in a compromised, uh, allegationally kind of, kind of mode. Uh, however, we are missing the art of sacred touch, uh, the art of sacred uh, closeness and the art of sacred belonging, which does not v- violate or exploit anyone else. It just uh, is, is is more giving and more humble and more giving and more connecting. How do you, uh, you know, do you see uh, other venues using like an open open uh, coffee club or, you know, or how do they use this the day of the day? Um, well, we, we begin to... Uh, I mean, as, as you notice, I mean, people, friends, when they meet, they meet over something. Mm-hmm. When we want to meet mm-hmm. as a family member, we go for lunches or dinners, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, when there's a business transaction happening, people go, let's go out for lunch. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so we are 
we are uh, normally think about food connectedness in a space where we can have conversations it's become a ritual yes mm -hmm. yes you know and that ritual is is important rituals mm -hmm. uh, it's very important that we maintain that but it can be used in the medical field as well mm -hmm. so part of my message is for my colleagues and healthcare professionals that they need not to be fearful but they need to be mindful uh, and then use uh, the methodologies of uh, being with people in a manner which is comforting, safe for both parties, but at the same time uh, enhance the healing process rather than just throwing a pill at someone and hoping mm -hmm. they'll get better. Mm -hmm. um, so coffee really becomes a bridge between the healer and those who are seeking to be healed. Excellent. Excellent. And it really breaks down the barriers. I mean, it raises a lot of, here's, you're the doctor on this pedestal and you know, tell me what I'm supposed to do with myself. So this, this really kind of, you know, brings them down, down to your level. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also I recognize that it is frustrating for the doctors as well. Mm -hmm. When doctors feel that their patients are not getting better, uh, they get frustrated and they start throwing another pill and mm -hmm. yet another pill. Or they become, you know, not unha un uh, they become unhappy about a person not getting better and call them non-compliant and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so this is very gentle approach, and within that, the science works as well. Do you foresee a day where the doctors? Do you think this is going to be recognizable one day, where the doctors that don't adapt to this sort of method will be the ones that are left without the clients? Well, it is, it is uh, I would say at this time, you know, um, uh, for many patients, um, they don't know this is a possibility. For many doctors, they don't know these mm -hmm. are the possibilities. So I think that this training and education is really not new. When I had entered in medical school and uh, in our residency uh, uh, trainings, we were taught these skills. We were taught how to be sitting down next to the bed of a patient, you know, at the same level as the patient is, and being able to uh, do a physical examination and being able to, you know, be respectful. But there was a lot of eye contact and, and respectfulness going on and, and, and connectedness going on. That has been, uh, in my opinion, uh, as more technologies have come around, we used to have rounds around the patient, our attending and our or we as students would be around the patient and talk about and learn right on the, on the spot. And now we go to a big room, there are PowerPoint slideshows, and there are all these reports and x-rays, and there's no patient. Well, that's the one most important person. It's taking the human face off of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The most important person in this whole conversation is the person we're talking about. I mean, I mean, to a point, um, you know, if I was, say, in there for, I was getting surgery on my leg or whatever, and that was your case, yeah. uh, I mean, I think, you know, I would feel uncomfortable with a bunch of people around me talking sure. about my condition, but, sure. but I think they would need to see that expression on my face sure. to have that human, fit, that human face put on it. Absolutely. Yeah, go ahead. I think it also helps educate the patient, because then whenever you're sitting there, with your residents and your attending, whenever you're talking about it, they also learn about it too, and they get a better understanding mm -hmm. of what their condition is also. And then they can have more input into their treatment. Absolutely. Because sometimes, it's a very, very, very good point, because when, when the education is happening, it's not only happening for the students in learning, it's happening for the person who is also were wanting to know what's wrong with their body, you know, what's wrong with their, you know, what disease they have, because diseases are very scary. Mm -hmm. And we all want to know, okay, so if I am now diabetic or if I have this tumor, what does that mean? It's going to kill me or it's going to be something that can be treated. And, and knowing the facts is very important regardless of the facts. Because, I mean, we cannot close our eyes to condition, but we can manage them far more effectively if we have all the knowledge and the option, then we have the informed consent for treatments. Mm -hmm. um, so I believe that such an interaction actually brings back uh, the beauty of difficulties to our awareness, and then we can do something more effective about it. Uh, and as you think, I, I just want to also say, I think the cost of medicine is going up because partly not that we do defensive medicine, because now people want to, if you bring in, if you come in with a headache, 
my God, you're going to get a million dollar workout. But also because we are unable to know things in a more, because patients will tell us what's, what's going on and how it's affecting their lives, what symptoms do they have. Most physicians at this time don't have enough patients to listen and be effectively present. Uh, most common, uh, they were saying, you know, that within 20 or 30 seconds, uh, the doctor interrupts the patient's conversation. You know, it's that fast. So, and they, they want to just keep moving. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if we pay attention for maybe two or three more minutes, we can know a lot more, which is relevant to making good diagnosis and thus good treatment opp- opportunities before we start ordering tests. I'm starting to I'm starting to criticize my own doctor in my head about how that goes now. It's like yeah no yeah he just goes right through gets through yeah yeah no <laughs> interrupts okay. <laughs> we have perfected the art of apparent listening. Uh, yeah yeah. <laughs> I haven't even been I haven't even been to him in eight months and I'm thinking back like oh, man <laughs> I'm going to be looking for a new doctor after this. Um, or or helping the doctor become effective. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so part of the thing that we do at CClear is allowing our fellow clinicians, physicians, students, residents, and others to become more effective rather than fearing that such mindfulness practices of connecting with people would take a more more time. Actually, mm-hmm. it saves time. Mm-hmm. Um, if we learn how to be active listeners, so three or four more minutes spending with, with the person and the patient and the family and looking at the records actually gives us a lot more data and information up front and saves a lot of time down the line. Uh, and so so it's really not more time consuming, it's actually time more time efficient. It's getting ahead of the problem. It yeah. always is, yes. And you develop a therapeutic alliance. Uh, one of my teachers used to say, uh, Dr. John Thomas at St. Francis Hospital, uh, he would say that the prescription is an extension of the pres- doctor who is writing it. If they don't trust you, the prescription would not work for them either. Hmm. Uh, and I still remember his comments, and I believe in that. If 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 we are giving a treatment to somebody, and they don't believe in or they don't understand what they're getting, it doesn't work either. It creates more side effects than benefits. And I know I know that's something you know. I hear a lot here. Uh, we were just talking about uh, in another episode here about family addiction and making them understand what, say, Suboxone does with them and, and work along with them on the problem, hmm. you know, as opposed to, here you go, we'll be good in two weeks, <laughs> you know. Okay, absolutely. And I think our students who come here see that difference. Uh, you have any thoughts? Uh, yeah, I definitely notice a difference in educating patients about what you're giving them and then getting their feedback too about how medications are working for them. And I think that helps in treating other patients because then you get a better idea of how these Mm -hmm. medications are working for people. Because as a doctor, you most likely aren't using the medications you're prescribing. So it's good to build up as much of a database in your own head about how it works for people. So I think just spending time with them and getting to know what their thoughts are on that Mm -hmm. gives you a better, it just helps you become a better clinician in the future. And a better listener. <laughs> uh, a good listening uh, is is when our mind is quiet and we are receiving the information. Mm-hmm. If our mind is already kind of thinking about, I'm going to say this thing after the other person shuts up, well, then we're really not listening. We're just waiting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so by being an active listener, as you were saying, it just increases your knowledge base, what the benefits or lack of or the side effects or, or those kind of things. It's a living experience. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, and this kind of goes to you know um, we were having a conversation earlier about this about you know medical the medical field is very hard. You know, I didn't say what we say. We see a lot of smoking. We see a lot of you know, you know whatever whatnot. You know, people not taking care of themselves, um, which you know can be a part of. Um, can I say com- compartmentalizing the stuff they see, the the bad stuff they're seeing, the, everybody's problems that they they experience? You know, I'm sure in the in the psychiatric field is it's probably similar. Um, you know, how you know how how does that get dealt with? Yeah, it is actually very very, uh, very important. If you and I were to go to see somebody and they check our eyes and then say, well, you know, I don't know what's wrong with the rest of it. 
uh, well, that's really not sufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to know what's wrong with me. I included. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so having said that, uh, again, being very attentive uh, to uh, the person's fullest complaints actually then gives us, it's almost like, uh, you know, if, if your plumbing system is backed up, the problem is someplace. And if you don't pay attention, it's going to continue to back up and create more problems. So for physicians part, it's very important to coordinate care. They must. Like this morning, uh, as soon as I was done with our coffee, coffee with the doctor group, our medical doctor wanted to talk to me about somebody that, you know, we both are involved in their, in her treatment. And, and he said, you know, well, I have, I have met with her. Uh, she has told me a number of complaints that she has. And this is what I'm doing about those complaints. I'm going to do an x-ray or an examination here, sending for this consultation. Now, if he was to just write a note and run away, I would have probably not seen that. Mm -hmm. But again, that doctor-to-doctor -doctor contact is very important. Uh, and we used to do that all the time. Uh, we would pick up the phone and call the primary care doctor. Uh, or the primary care doctor would pick up the phone and call us. Or we would call the cardiologist and say, well, you know, I saw so-and-so. Like last night, uh, you know, I got a call from, from a pediatrician for somebody that they were that we were asked to see. She took the time. It was like close to 7 or 8 p.m. at night, evening, and called and gave me the report. Then I gave her the information that I, I thought she needed to know. And, and we agreed upon how to consult for, for their unique needs. And that used to be so common and so uncommon these days. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, if you don't do that, you're kind of taking the frustration of it not being solved on yourself, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So I gave her some ideas about what needs to be done on her end. And, and we realized that, you know, that per particular person's mother also needs some help. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we were able to connect. It's much better than a letter, much better than a record being sent out. It's a human connectedness mm -hmm. uh, between clinicians. Uh, within four, five, six minutes, we both knew uh, all that we needed to know. And, and we respond to the, responded to the question that we both knew. So I am, as a clinician, can be far more effective knowing that background and the knowledge. Uh, and that, that is unfortunately missing. Uh, with all these electronic records, you know, which are fine, <laughs> <laughs> we need to have an electronic human connection too. <laughs> we call it energy medicine. <laughs> it's a, you know, it's a, it, 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 I think a lot of people do get mis, mis, mistake the technology. It needs to be a tool, not a crutch. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. The technology is absolutely wonderful. I mean, it is like anything else. Uh, no longer I have to carry a big PDR. Which PDA. PDA. No, PDR was. Oh, PDR? Yeah, PDR was our our huge book for uh, the uh, medications, uh, you know, uh, oh. drug reactions. Uh, and I went, uh, that's called PDR. And now I have in a very small little gadget, uh, <laughs> all the drug-drug interactions and whatnot. And it, it gives an easy access to information. There's no question. However, I shouldn't be texting while I'm seeing my patient. <laughs> That's where it becomes a problem. <laughs> be, 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 be happy for the fact you're not breaking your back, carrying a file cabinet with you uh, uh, that you can have on your phone, basically. But yes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Don't abuse it. That's exactly. Right. That's exactly. Right. I remember, you know, us frantically trying to look for our books, you know, in our folder, then this place and that place. So with this little thing, you know, I can play music or I can check out a drug-drug interaction, it's very effective. It is when it becomes a barrier to effective care. Mm -hmm. So technology is wonderful. It has made our lives so simple and so effective because there are so many things that you cannot remember. Can I share a little anecdote with you? Sure. I, of course, I, I, I listen to a lot of technology uh, stuff and uh, all the the venture capitalists and the, and the entrepreneurs and everything out in California, they, they're addicted to these things, right? So apparently there's a group of them that they go to dinner, dinner lunch, whatever they do, and they take all of their phones and they stick them on a, in a pile in the middle <laughs> of the table. And the first one that is compelled to answer his phone or check his message or his email or whatnot pays for the, the meal. <laughs> pays for the meal. <laughs> 
that's what we should do in our <laughs> groups too. You know? <laughs> doing, 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 doing groups <laughs> meeting to you know, whoever's phone rings first and covers right. the fees for the rest. That's right. Like, Thank congratulations. Cooks the meal and cleans up the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you do dishes. And that's right. I start making my deal with my wife. <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be very powerful incentive to keep them mm-hmm. <laughs> at bay. <laughs> But then, if nobody, if you, it's actually successful, who does the dishes? <laughs> <laughs> very interesting. But well, anyway, it's great stuff. Good, good, good ideas to implement in the medical sciences now. There you go. There you go. You're gonna, you're gonna try that next time you go That's out right. for lunch. Everybody's <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> Tremendous. Yeah. So, um, so what's what's? I mean, are, is there anything else? Uh, the coffee club's going to continue, of course. Is there anything else you, on the on the table you want to try to this effect? Well, I'm finding uh, uh, interestingly as the medicine continues to evolve into subspecialties and then super specialties and then uh, robotic control surgery and all that, uh, we are beginning to lose that simple touch and the simple awareness. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think part of our um, returning to simple basic principles of care can reduce the healthcare cost, mm-hmm. uh, can improve communication with our patients, can also improve uh, uh, the simple way of connecting. Um, the coffee probably cost us maybe, you know, eight, seven, eight bucks. Whereas now the co-payment for the modern day medicine is like 35 bucks or $50. Mm-hmm. So if you compare the cost of coffee and and having a good connected communication with our patients it's much much less than any other medicine which is out there and we are using coffee as a symbolism mm-hmm. uh, we do stories we, we come together to hear and, and understand things better uh, so I think that modern day medicine and medical schools and in places where uh, at sickly we have tried a number of innovative techniques and tools and it's so exciting they work they bring in healing in serious depression then serious schizophrenia then panic disorder then bipolar disorder your feed seeing that the burden of medicine can be reduced by adding such complementary ideas into clinical practices awesome tremendous did you notice that in your short Jewish <laughs> I definitely did. Uh, there is a lot of alternative treatments that patients can look towards too. And then uh, it just seems like they have, there's so many options that they can go to if they want to try group, if they want to try individual therapy, if they want to try yoga, if they want to try Reiki, if they just want to come in and talk to you or Jeff. Um, there's just a lot of different options that they can choose from. And then everyone's just open to talking to them. Even if they're just sitting there waiting for their appointment, there's You can go to the kitchen and have some tea and talk with the staff. And right. even that in itself is treatment. You're having time to interact with others. Getting to know. Mm-hmm. So that's why we have decided to adopt you too. Nobody wants to have you leave. Like, hey, there's a, there's a number of staff here that were students. Originally, right. So. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> It's hard to leave. And you're undecided. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep the what is it? We'll keep the light on for you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We'll keep the light on. For you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we had our one of our former students who came and gave a lecture here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Peter well, is, is actually in Virginia, and he came all the way from Virginia uh, because he felt it was very exciting to have the environment where we work together as colleagues and clinicians and yet provide state-of-the-art treatments, mm-hmm. which is such as coffee house. So if you're interested in having a coffee with a doctor, um, uh, you are welcome to join. <laughs> 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 no more cigar with a doctor, though. <laughs> <laughs> and please, and if you're not in the area, I encourage you to start your own movement yes, <laughs> coffee yes, movement that's right, so that's right, that's right. wherever you may be out there that's right, so that's right that's right i think that's a very good point we can we can generalize that to any setting mm-hmm. to our neighborhood our community where we, we can begin to connect again mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I, i want to start a freelancer one now for my field <laughs> <laughs> it's like i, I just you know it, it, you, and you know you always talk about you guys 
um, always need, need to be able to, you know, bounce ideas off of each other. Um, and I find that a lot with my stuff too. Um, you know, in the creative field, in the medical field, I mean, it just seems very, I, I see a lot of one to ones in a lot of that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even if you're not in the medical field, maybe this is, this is a great concept. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Very well said. I, I agree with that. So, well, uh, said, uh, if anybody wants to ask you how you get everybody into the coffee club, uh, where can they contact you? Well, uh, see clear, uh, uh, seven two four four six eight three nine nine nine. Check our website, and we also are located in Delmont, Export, Pennsylvania. Very easy to reach. Serene, peaceful place. Um, tall pine trees. Beautiful <laughs> coffee, and during summer, wonderful outdoors. Yes, <laughs> and soon chickens. I think. Soon chicken, <laughs> then goats to arrive. <laughs> We've talked about so much. <laughs> Uh, excellent, excellent. And thank you everybody for joining us for, uh, the, the Seclair Chatter Box. Uh, if you want to continue the conversation, again, like I said, go to seclair.com, go to, uh, seclair.com slash blog, leave comments under this episode. Uh, feel free to email me with any, uh, uh, thoughts or, uh, uh, ideas for future episodes you'd like to see at mike at seclair.com. And until next time, we'll see you in the Chatterbox. Box.